Hello guys. So I am one month into my Coursera data analytics course, and I sort of wanted to give you guys a bit of an update as to how it's going. So here's the actual certificate program. Um, <clears throat> as I've already talked about it a little bit, the Coursera course that's put on is it comes in multiple sections. So the data analytics section um, actually has, I think, eight sections that you go through and each one is about you know, something between three or four weeks. And I think in total, it comes out to about six months of work. Now, I am already one month in. So here's my data analytics journal. I started on the fifth and um, I've been taking some pretty good notes for myself. Nothing really major. A lot of this is cut and paste or simple stuff that I just wanted to keep for myself so I can reference back later. Um, and now I am on, yeah, t today is the fourth or fifth, I don't remember, but uh, we're getting up there. So it's been about a month and I'm pretty far into the course. So I kind of wanted to take you in for the ride here. So I'm on the login screen. <clears throat> so here we go takes you to the actual the last place that you left off in the course and then you can always click through just to kind of um, see what else is coming up uh, what your overall progress is so over here I'm on the preparation so prepare data uh, before that, it was ask about data, and before that, it was kind of uh, the basics. So this one is going to be about five weeks and an expected end time of August 8th. But it looks like I'm actually doing pretty good. <laughs> it looks like I'm going to be pretty far ahead. And you can go over here, uh, tons of great information uh, in general about you know all the different things that Coursera has. And uh, you can take a look and see where you're at uh, in the course section. Um, so really the main reason I wanted to show you this is because the flow of everything is super simple and super easy and no section is really difficult. I take notes just because I want to kind of remember some of the things that I did. But one thing that maybe is different about me than somebody else is I don't take a course like this because my goal is to be a data scientist or data analyst. Obviously, you're not going to become a data scientist with this course based on everything that I've learned, you're going to become a data analyst. Um, so you're going to be able to analyze data and create reports and derive conclusions and help decision makers, etc. But one thing always leads to another for me. So I am on this course, I'm taking a course and I all of a sudden jump on Kaggle because they have you set up an account on Kaggle and you get to um, play around with data sets that other people have created and all the different things that they've done. And you get to learn Python. Python's an important uh, programming language that's used more and more in uh, all sorts of settings. And here I found a great free Python course. So great, now I can do a Python course. And then, um, as you guys know, well, <laughs> maybe you guys don't know, uh, you're maybe physicians who aren't at all familiar with this space. Um, there is data comes in massive amounts of, uh, the pieces of information that is all bundled up into one little table or chart or something. And so it's not as straightforward, right, to go through it all. And so that's what this uh, SQL language is there for, or SQL. Um, it's, it's a method for sifting through the database, for making certain things happen in the database to manipulate the database so that you can get to the final conclusion. Now, another way that we've always done this is with sheets. So I might go well, I'm not going to pull up a Google Sheets right now, but um, I might go to uh, Google Sheets or what is it? What is the one? Uh, Excel. And I will create a big list of items and then I will sort through them. I'll filter through it. And I wasn't really that familiar with working with spreadsheets, but that's that's another thing that this course has been really good. And I've learned a lot with it is how to learn how to manipulate spreadsheets. Even that alone is an incredible skill to have because uh, you need to know how to do it, um, especially when you get away from some of the clinical work that you do and dabble more into kind of the administrative work 
and health informatics. So it's it's been a great skill. Python is a great skill. Now, how deep do I need to go into these lessons? Probably not that deep to get a good understanding from, from my research. Within six months, you should be able to have a good idea of what Python is going to do for you. You're probably not going to be proficient, but you should have a good idea within six months. Um, think of it as like being a pretty good Spanish speaker within six months, right? So this is SQL. So I learned some incredible stuff with SQL. Um, and then it kind of continued taking me to different places. So now I learned about Tableau. Tableau is a way for you to create data dashboards. Data dashboards are ways for you to interact with data. So if I click on a particular data dashboard, I can take a bunch of data and I can make it into this beautiful uh, interactive tool, I guess. Uh, and I've come across this over the years, I think, and I never knew what it was and I didn't know what Tableau was and I didn't know that you could create this and uh, it's pretty cool, it's pretty neat. And I think uh, these, are, these are the skills that you're gonna learn in this course, right? So how to take your data and put it in Tableau and make it interactive. Um, probably not very extensively. Um, I think uh, a lot of the things that I did on my own, I went to, um, in fact, I'll show you here. And I'm trying to show you what my thought process has been, like how I've jumped from one thing to another. So this is my uh, LinkedIn profile. And I've decided to pay for, I've decided to go for the premium version. It, I guess it puts premium up there for you. And I went to the learning and I started looking at data science. I started looking at um, data analytics. And I started taking some of their courses and some of the things that I found is this Tableau, um, like uh, Tableau Essential Training, uh, basically showing your data really well, data visualization as it's called. Um, so again, one more one more step in my thought process, right? And one more step, uh, one more thing I learned that I didn't know about. Uh, maybe I didn't master it, but enough that I have an idea of what it's about and I can at least dabble in it and see if it's something interesting and I can do something with it. Finally, uh, I don't know why I say finally, it's not finally. Next, um, I learned about the pathway for program for the American Board of Preventative Medicine, who uh, offers a health informatics, clinical informatics board certification, uh, subspecialty. Um, and basically there's a pathway program, meaning that you don't have to actually take a two year fellowship. You can you you can submit all the information based on your eligibility criteria, which you can do, uh, you can kind of click through. And if you qualify, you can sit for the board exam. You can study for the board exam. You can sit for the board exam, which is incredible. I mean, I think that's super cool uh, because if you can sit for the board exam and if you pass the board exam, now you're a clinical informaticist, as they call them. So here's the outline for what the exam will look like. And uh, I believe there is a health informatics organization that offers a pretty good online course and, a, in, and an in-person course that you can take. But here's kind of the content um, of the exam, uh, the core exam. So there's going to be a lot of uh, preventative board, uh, preventative medicine stuff that you also have to do. And then the actual clinical informatics, it's going to be kind of like fundamental knowledge. It actually breaks it down into a lot more detail here. So kind of conflict resolution, business management, um, a lot of analytic tools, working with analytic uh, stuff, data cycles, data science, stewardship of data, um, sort of the privacy uh, surrounding data, how to keep it secure, a lot of HIPAA and um, health, protected health information, PHI stuff, kind of like governance and how uh, things work in healthcare. So a bit of that uh, boring stuff maybe for some people and uh, workflow analysis. So this is a lot of like project management stuff that um, you need to know a little bit about uh, what else. So yeah, you can, you can kind of look through this um, just to get a better sense of what the test is about. And again, uh, up here, I showed you guys that you can just kind of see if you uh, can apply, if you're eligible for the pathway, right? Not doing the thing, not doing the actual fellowship. And so what's cool about this is like, again, I started with a Coursera course and now all of a sudden I found out that I can actually 
sit for this exam. Now, is it important to me? I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Uh, you have until 2023. That's when it's actually 2022 will be the last year that the pathway will be open. After that, you have to do a fellowship. But it is sort of an interesting idea and it's something that I can now consider. Moving on, other things that I learned is that there are data sets. You can do a search with Google. It's called uh, dataset search.research.google.com. And many of you probably, hopefully, are familiar with Scholar. So if you are looking for um, any kind of research paper or document, um, you can uh, you can find it here, I'm sure. COVID-19 should be quite well represented. Um, so you can do all sorts of research and find really great documents. So I learned about that. Uh, well, actually, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I knew about Scholar, but I learned about the database search. So this is great because I can go and find a bunch of diabetes data and go to town. And what can I do with it? So once I find the data, now this, this might come from the CDC. This is from a Kaggle site. This is from the CDC. These are great. That means, that means these are really, really good data sets that are, that are dependable, um, that I can do some work with. Now, is it, do I want to do this work myself? Maybe. Could I just go to upwork.com and hire someone to do it for me? Sure. You know, so the point is that if I have an understanding of how data science works, how data analytics works, then it's probably easier for me to go take a bunch of data and then say, hey, uh, I need some sort of a conclusion made from this data. And I want to know if this kind of business idea or business plan might work from it. So you can download this data, you can play around with it, you can manipulate it, or of course I could do it myself. So uh, I think this was fascinating. This was a great tool for me to learn. And then let's skip the scholar. Uh, the next thing that I found, because I was on YouTube and I was watching certain people who were talking about data science and data analytics, there's a free online course for learning our programming language, which is a very important programming language and probably not that difficult. I mean, I think for physician, when I say it's not difficult, you're a physician. Uh, it's there's not a lot of structured stuff out there that you're going to have a hard time with. Nothing's going to be as difficult as medical school or probably residency. So uh, the, the point is that these are very doable, but um, with a bit of earth science background, they're going to teach you R and Python. Uh, and this is free as well. And this was earthdatascience.org. So that was also a great find. Uh, finally, rounding out to the last thing that I found here, uh, the World Health Organization, the CDC and all these other, and the, 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 our, the, our US government, they have a bunch of data that they publish that is available for us to take a look at. Like, I thought this was cool. I found this one. So this is all the medical doctors per 10,000 or actually here, click on that, filter. Uh, okay, let me, <laughs> probably should have done that before. Um, so I can click on all these filters and I can take a look at all the physicians in all over the world. How many physicians are there in, in 2016? How many physicians were there in Afghanistan? 9,000. And if I go further down, I went too far down. If I go to Australia, how many were there in 2018? 93,000. And in 1996, 40,000. So it's very cool to be able to have access to this data. And there's a lot more information actually in this data set. I know that because I actually exported it. I downloaded it and then I took it through my own spreadsheet. I filtered it. I sorted it, and those, those are the skills that I've learned in this data analytics course so far. But who knows? I, I don't know what information I would do with this. App. For example, I had no idea that there was like 3 million doctors in China. That's freaking amazing. So anyway, that's pretty much everything, guys. Kind of wanted to give you a bit of an update on how things are going. Still, I'm still going strong. It's been pretty easy so far. I haven't felt that, uh, I haven't felt intimidated. Looks like I'm, looks like I'm passing. Uh, this course. Um, there's discussion forums. There's all sorts of information here for you to review on Coursera. Um, so if you're still interested, follow along and I'll keep you guys posted. I think for me, the career options here are pretty interesting. And if you go to indeed.com and you start looking at clinical data analytics jobs, or if you go to LinkedIn, LinkedIn jobs is a, is a pretty good one. And I type in clinical data analytics, or sorry, analyst. And you can find there is a bunch of clinical data analysts. Now, it's good to look through this as you're taking this course, especially if you're serious about this, because 
you'll probably see that some companies are pretty strict. I mean, they're going to want you to have a certain amount of skills and then others may not, right? So maybe a healthcare startup is not going to be, they're not going to, it's not going to be as big of a deal to them, but you can see there's uh, senior analysts, junior analysts, uh, all sorts of different types of analyst positions for clinical data. And the question is what you're going to do with it. I don't know. Let's do, let's find one here. What are they looking for? We are looking for someone to help our product and clinical team lead our data analysis for measuring the efficacy of our product and impact it is having on our loopers. This includes both macro pattern and the application as well as individual changes. Okay, so that's what they're looking for, loopers. Uh, they're looking for somebody to uh, do something with uh, loop data, I guess. All right, and then uh, I can do the same thing here. So um, I usually do the search for clinical consultant, but uh, let's do clinical data analyst. And I always uh, go remote for my Indeed jobs. And then here you can find some random company, remote epic ambulatory analyst. Who knows? Who knows what that is? Uh, they want, a, oh, this is another great thing about Indeed. When I do a search, they say, looks like you're missing something, epic certification. I'm like, epic certification? Well, I've done epic for fucking forever. So then I go to, where's my learning? Where's my learning? Is it my learning? No, it is my learning. Okay. I go over here and I type in epic EMR. Um, doesn't look like there's much. So let's try that again. Epic. Intro to Epics, Epics, Epics theme. Okay. So not a lot on uh, LinkedIn. So then I can go to Coursera and I can type in Epic. And what do we got? Is there some sort of certification course? Setting up a digital library with Epic, great. Great, so this might be my start. I might dabble in this and see what other courses are recommended based on this. Um, see if I can get a certification out of it. It doesn't look like it's a certification course, um, but still it might be something that I can uh, put on my profile. So when I go to LinkedIn, when I go to my profile, at the very bottom, actually, if you click on my profile, here, you guys can see that I have licenses and certifications in data, visual data visualization storytelling, which I took over here, uh, SQL, uh, which I took over here, uh, presence on video conference call. I did that. I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty good professional one to put in. And I put my board certification with uh, the American Board of Family Medicine, my NBPAS board certification. Um, I don't know what, yeah, this stuff is just stuff that they add in there. But it's pretty cool because you can add all of the certification. And this is not bacterial vaginosis. This is, uh, that's just the name of the company. And this is structured data. This is sort of like uh, search engine optimization stuff. And the reason I did it is because I'm interested in it and I wanted to have it. You can actually add a certificate here. If I go up here and I say add a certificate, you can actually uh, upload the credential ID or the credential URL. So it will populate it here for you, which is really neat. So even if you do a Coursera course or somewhere else, uh, it's always uh, great to add that stuff on here. So that's it, guys. Uh, just give you a pretty decent preview. But again, if you see a certification that you think might be helpful to you, by, by all means, jump on there and do it. And uh, that might be your entry into a course. Okay, guys, take care. If you have any questions, email me, drmo at digitalnomadphysician.com.